Hi everybody, Russell Markham here. Please note our financial services guide per our web page there for further information on our license. Please note, I'm not licensed to give personal advice. Please do speak to your financial advisor for personal advice. Past performance not guarantee of future results. Forecasts and bank tests used or discussed in this presentation are intended as guide only. And actual results may be affected by known or unknown risks and uncertainties and therefore may differ materially from the results ultimately achieved. All right, let's jump right into it. The first thing I wanted to point out there in the weekly essay there is if you didn't already read it, if you haven't already read it there, 27th of May in Vectivest Canada. So when you log into Vectivest, just click on the Canadian flag, put your username and password in, and then you can hop along to Vectivest Views and go to the 27th of May. Stan Heller wrote an excellent essay there about perception is reality. Anyway, I don't want to uh, get too much more into it because... We covered it there in the weekly essay there for you, but uh, uh, it just goes to show that, you know, what's taking place out there in the market at the moment is not being reflected. What I mean by that is that corporate earnings are strong. They are strong, believe it or not, despite all the doom and gloom says out there, corporate earnings are booming along at the moment, certainly in Canada and in Australia. So what gives, why is this market pulling back? And therein lies our great opportunity. We're going to go and find those good quality stocks with great corporate earnings that have been sold down heavily in the current market, such that when the market turns, we're in a position to take advantage. Right, so with that said, let's cut straight to the chase here. I've created a watch list. You'll need to set this up yourself. Easy enough just to create a watch list within a group. In this example here, I've just put it under my watch list, for example, and I've called it here, stellar earnings with beaten down price. So you might just want to jot these down and see what you think. All right, so let's graph the selected here. So I'm just going to click on there, graph selected. And first thing first here, let's just simply look at the earnings taking place. All right, so you can see here Bank of Queensland. And let's bring in a freehand line here. We can see price has been falling quite steeply here. Let's uh, just make that jump out a tad more here. So let's do this, for example. All right, so you can see price has been falling. And then on the freehand line, look, uh, earnings have been doing the opposite. They've been going up very nicely. So let's just bring that in there uh, for extra effect. So that's what we're after. We're after that sort of pincer type movement, V-shape type thing, because something's got to give. You cannot continue to have the share price falling and falling while earnings are going up. All right, so these are the ones that jumped out at me. Uh, you know, you can see there's that uh, pattern again. Uh, earnings are coming up, price falling. So CHC, again, we're seeing it with, with ANZ. Uh, although the earnings have somewhat flattened out uh, slightly here, but nonetheless, it's still going up, but price continues to sort of get sold down. All right, you might be wondering, well, why, why is this taking place? Remember, we've been in a confirmed down since January. All right, so again, you know, CCP here. Uh, same deal again, all right? And the last one I've got here, JB Hi-Fi, all right? Earnings continuing to power on, and in recent times, certainly uh, there. That's why I've selected it in recent times. It's falling away despite uh, those earnings powering on. All right, so if I close out of here, and if I go to graphs here, and we've not stock in the drop-down market timing, and uh, let's just uh, change this just to a MTI layout here. And I'll just keep on the MTI for now, and I'll minimize this. And I just want to simply look at the confirmed signals. You can see over here, we've been in a confirmed down since the 14th of January, right? There we are, 14th of January. We can see just starting to see that market just starting to turn around with the MTI coming up. So we're going to watch closely. Is this the start of that market turnaround? But this is a big reason as to why, you know, a lot of companies out there, globally have been sold down somewhat and your job as an investor there with the power of Vectivest tools there you can go and identify some of the most heavily sold down companies with some of the best corporate earnings because when that market turns there'll be a turning point when we get a confirmed up signal for example the next turning point like the big one here for example back on the 25th of May last year 2021 when that turning point 
takes place. If you're holding on to a great set of blue chip type companies, for example, with great rising earnings, then you're putting yourself in an excellent position for when that market turns around. And this is a classic bottom fishing type strategy where you could stand to make some good money buying those over heavily oversold blue chip companies. Now, again, please, I can't give advice today. Speak to your financial advisor for personal advice. But I'm going to show you using VectorVest how I identified these companies here. All right. So you'll see here in average, I've got a total price across these uh, six companies here of $20.99 and a value of just over $26 there. So 26.28. So straight away, I like to find a group of undervalued companies. You can see here very good upside potential RV at 1.4 RS, not bad at 0.96. Ideally, I would like it stronger, but bearing in mind, I'd like it above one, but bearing in mind, these companies have been heavily oversold. All right. So they're under a bit of pressure that sort of starts tying in a bit into relative safety as well uh, certainly from a technical perspective they've been beaten up uh, you if you choose you could go and pick on a couple of strong companies here but uh, the net effect the net effect is why i like these here is because that's the net effect the net effect here is that we're seeing prices declining are along with a rising set of earnings and that bodes very well for future price appreciation potential so you might be asking yourself, well, how did I find these companies? One of the easiest ways to find these companies that I find here, you can use UniSearch, our all-powerful UniSearch. But I like to just make use of Watchlist Viewer per viewers. So open up viewers, and then you go to Watchlist Viewer. So once you open up viewers, you can go to uh, on the left here, or if you choose here, on the right, Watchlist Viewer. And then I go to S&P ASX. And I like to start off with, let's say, the ASX 100. And all I'm doing here is I'm just sorting these. So I click on the sort button here, so just above the date. I clicked on the button just there. And then I just like to sort them by RT. All right, so uh, there we are, RT. And I like to put it in ascending order. So find me the weakest RT uh, companies there. Right click, let's order fit all columns, make it nice and neat. As you can see, a lot of these are cell rated, all right, means the price has fallen below the stop that we calculate every day. Remember, the stop is a 13-week moving average of the share price adjusted for the fundamentals. So when you get a sell rating popping up, it tells us we need to be careful. Um, and then it's just a matter of just going through these companies and finding the ones with the best earnings where the prices have been heavily sold down. All right, so you can see NEC, it's not bad. It's kind of leveled out. That's why it didn't make my short list. But uh, certainly it's got what I'm looking for. Not quite on this one here. SEK, Seek here. Because, well, the earnings are falling and the share price is falling at the same time. Uh, you'll get one that then jumps at it at you, right? So you, you just go through and, and then you'll get one that jumps out. So, for example, Domino's Pizza here. You can see the earnings are really... And you can see how I've drawn in lines in the past to show me that you know how the earnings have been powering up. But overall, it's a pretty good set of earnings. It's been holding pretty steady, uh, yet the price has been falling. So this might be one that you consider, for example. Uh, you're spoiled for choice in VectorVest, right? And uh, you can choose the best ones there for you. So uh, Charter Hall Group here really jumped out at me. A great set of rising earnings along with the share price that was falling down. So there was one that made my list, for example. And away you go, and you can pick them out. Nothing wrong with this one here, IDP Education, for example. You know, I can see here the earnings just continue to go up. Uh, so that's encouraging. But you're seeing that the, the share price continues to, to fall away. All right, so just a matter of just going through these and, and picking out the ones that jump out at you. Uh, the other check and balance I did on the ones that I picked on, I also wanted to make sure that uh, these companies were undervalued as well. All right, so add in param to capital appreciation value. I just put a little ex extra check and balance. You know, I I would prefer the company to be undervalued. It doesn't have to be. This is just a, a preference that I've got here. Uh, if it's not of uh, urgent consideration for yourself, uh, you don't need to do it. I just did it as an extra check and balance. All right. So that said, uh, just to go through the list that I worked with, ASX 100, and I did the same thing with the ASX 200. Same deal, uh, clicked on the sort and bring it 
bring the RT there and uh, change it to ascending. There we are. So on the sort RT ascending, and away I went again. All right, so just a matter of just graphing the first couple there and working your way, your way down. Now, if you're prepared to put a little bit more time in, it doesn't take you much more than a couple of seconds on, on each stock. You can see how the technicals are falling away, for example. But the key things I'm looking for here are earnings and price. And away I go again. All right, so I'm looking for, you know, one that really jumps out at me where I can see the earnings are coming up. Uh, there we are. So you can see CCX, for example, great set earnings have leveled off, but still holding steady, yet the price has been falling away quite a bit. All right. And uh, I put those all into watch list. And then in the watch list there, what I did then is I just uh, weeded out any that were overvalued. So let's uh, just go to my watch list there. So I saved it under my watch lists. And uh, let's just keep get going. But there we are. So that's one I generated. So you know, give it a name that you're happy with and save it under a group that you're happy with. Uh, but those were six that jumped out at me. So you can see they're all undervalued. So good upside potential there. Uh, and uh, the, the, the earnings were, were powering away. And uh, the, yet the prices were falling away. All right. So bring that up. And then the last couple of checks and balances I like to do. Uh, if you're after dividends, it's always encouraging to see that these companies are maintaining that, that very high dividend yields. So that bodes well for the future because if they weren't going to look to pay out dividends, it tells you that uh, those companies might be in trouble. It certainly doesn't appear to be that way. They're not slashing dividends any way, shape or form. So you can see dividends holding steady there. That, that uh, gives me uh, another check and balance. It bodes well. I look at the sales here. Let's bring this up and change the area and let's pull this back a tad. Uh, although sales are sort of flat at the moment, uh, but uh, they certainly haven't fallen off a cliff. right? So you might want to do it where you pick on uh, a set of stocks where the sales are, are rising. It's not bad. You know, it's, it's holding steady, so I'm happy with that. The net profit margin, I really like this. Uh, these companies here, the net profit margin is holding steady and rising. So sales holding steady, net profit margin ticking up, dividends being held steady, earnings increasing, earnings growth rate holding steady there at around about 19%. Yes, it has come off slightly, but let's not kid ourselves. 19% earnings growth rate is still a very good number. All right, so... In fairness, looking at this, and again, please speak to your financial advisor. I can't advise you personally, but looking at this from a general perspective, general advice perspective here, it appears that these companies have been oversold. All right, it just appears to be that way. I can see there's still a lot of upside value. The earnings are ticking away. So this is a watch list that I would tuck away and keep a close eye on and look to potentially implement depending on my risk appetite, when we get that market signal to turn around. Now, I might not wait for the confirmed signal. Uh, I might want to be a little bit more aggressive. All right, so I might wait, for example, the uh, DEW signal. We're currently in the DEW down. I might wait for the early DEW. If you're highly aggressive, our most aggressive timing signal is the primary wave, and you can see it's just recently kicked in. All right, so on the 26th of May, you can see that those six stocks had an average price weighting there of $20.69, and it is currently $20.99 and to two decimal places there. All right, so you can see it has just started to move up. So it'll be interesting to, to watch these, and we can certainly tune in in the weeks that follow to see how they perform. So how do you like the look of that methodology there? All right, companies with great sets of earnings there. Good earnings behind them. They look, they appear to be heavily oversold. So it comes down to what Stan Hill had noted per Dr. Deligo's essay. You know, perception is reality. At the moment, the market is perceiving the concerns of inflation, perceiving the concerns of high interest rates and what that will do to corporate earnings. But look right in front of you at what's taking place in terms of reality, at least now these six companies here, the earnings are still holding very much to the upside. All right. And the last thing I'll leave you with, and this gets really interesting from an overall market perspective. So there's two different ways I'm going to show you. 
The first way I'm going to show you per the watch list, the A6200 watch list, and I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to view the average of the A6200. Can you see what I see? Where are corporate earnings headed? They're going up, right? Going up. But where is the A6200 share price and average going? Yep, you got it. It's going down. Something's got to give. You can't continue to have a rising set of earnings across A6200 while seeing the A6200 on average falling. So this bodes well for when the market turns around. And the last place to go to under graphs, we'll add a new one on the stocks on the drop down here. We'll go to market climate. And uh, here is one I want to show you. All right, so I've just uh, clicked on market climate there. And I want to bring in this one here called ETI. So if you haven't got it on your graph already, add parameter and select ETI. Okay, uh, so if I remove it here just to show you. So you can add parameter and put in ETI and, uh, and then select it. All right, so I'll put it on here, right click, make it an area graph. Let's make it jump out a bit more. All right, here we are. Here's our earnings trend indicator. So it's a trend of all those earnings. You've just seen it on the A6200, for example. This is for the all odds. All right, and you can see, look at that. Earnings are going up. All right, the all odd index, on the other hand, is sort of coming off, right? It's sort of bouncing around and sort of coming off. Yet those earnings are holding up. So uh, the ingredients is there. All right, the perception of things not being good is there. But the reality is that things are good from what we're seeing here. Corporate earnings are still on track. If companies can pass on those increased costs due to higher inflation and higher interest rates and whatever have you, then it's not going to affect corporate earnings. Where companies can't pass on those costs, then it'll start impacting. So your job as an investor is to identify those companies that can pass on the costs, that can still continue to remain competitive and profitable in a higher interest rate environment. And bearing in mind that the interest rate is not really that high by uh, long-term standards, right? So uh, just to go back to my watch list again, uh, right? Just to, to, to bring up those stocks there, as we saw there, the earnings are still powering on in spite of the commentary taking place in the marketplace, in spite of the fact that we are seeing slightly higher interest rates. But having said that, uh, if I can hop back to graphs here on your market climate graph, you can put in T bills and T notes, and that uh, shows us the uh, interest rates. So T bills and T notes. Let's just uh, change the style. I won't get into all the definitions on these today, but it's fair, it's, it's fair to say that these are very accurate um, indicators of uh, what interest rates are. Well, certainly a good measurement of interest rates, and based on this here if you pull it back historically right so i'll go back 14 odd years you know we're still at a very very low levels so despite the talking heads and tv and and the media going oh be careful interest rates interest rates interest rates let's just take a deep breath take a step back and look at it we are still very very low by historical standards and the last one to address there is inflation everyone's going on about inflation in the media Again, uh, let's make an area graph and change the style. And let's uh, make it jump out a bit more. Here we are. Uh, inflation, although it's ticked up at 5%, let's just wait to see what happens because the high interest rates are going to start biting in. Uh, but you can see historically it's not, you know, it's not heads and shoulders of everything else. Sure, it's sort of ticking up. But, you know, if you ran an average fit line through there, it's around about the 3%. So it's not that much higher. So again, you know, perception versus reality. Hope you got a lot out of it. Until next week, bye for now.